before we begin this video, I want you to really take a look at this graph, okay? Uh, so Himera was a Greek colony in Italy, and some of the people buried in Himera were natives. Some of them were, you know, Greeks or Italians, Sicilians, uh, basically people native to the region, but some of them were actually not native to the region. So as you can see, Himera civilians form a cl cluster in group one. Uh, this is the cluster where all the Greeks and Italians are. Uh, now, Himera 480 BCE soldiers these are the ones we're going to be taking a look at in this video. They form group 3, group 4, group 5, group 2. Uh, in Group 5 is Caucasus, group 4 is something else, group 3 is Northeast Europeans, and in this video we'll be taking a look at two of these uh, one of these mercenaries, excuse me, from group 3 cluster, uh, who are Northeast Europeans who were living in Himera, Sicily. So this is who this video will be about. It's a guy with Y-DNA R1AZ280. This is a typically Slavic Y-DNA, nothing in the Uranian about it. And his mitochondrial DNA is U5. Uh, this is what he is predicted to look like. With Manasha Kotto, he's predicted to have blue eyes with an amber center, Greek-shaped nose, and blonde hair. Uh, he's got BEH1, blue eye haplotype 1, and BEH2. He does not have blue eye haplotype 3 or blue eye haplotype 4. Uh, with hair ID, he's predicted to have wavy hair, followed by curly hair, followed by straight hair, and definitely not kinky hair. Based on his genotype in SLC45A2 and ASIP, we can make the conclusion that he probably had a light European skin tone. With Snipper Free, he's actually predicted to have green or hazel eyes, blonde hair, and white skin. So you see how YSEC is giving him a prediction for blue eyes, whereas Snipper Free is giving him a prediction for green or hazel eyes. They're kind of not agreeing, they're not agreeing with each other, right? So in this case, you have to go with what my Nashakot is predicting, which is blue eyes with a neighbor center. When it comes to DRD2 Pro Francine Pro variation, he's got one European no-go learner allele, which is kind of interesting. So it's intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptors, intermediate uh, risk of schizophrenia, intermediate odds of being a no-go learner. Uh, he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which is very typical for all humans. Uh, now gorillas, monkeys, uh, chimpanzees, they score A1A1 here, but he's got A2A2, which means normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors. And... Um, normal odds for various illnesses. He's got normal amount of D2 dopamine receptors according to this variation of DRD2. Uh, I think I think the T allele would increase the amount of dopamine D2 receptors here. And he's got uh, GG genotype, which it means uh, warrior, which means val val in valmet variation of uh, Compt, uh, which means quicker dopamine reuptake, less dopamine in the system. Very stereotypically non-European genotype to have, but he's a European. But, you know, there is some variation too. And, and Europeans, there's there's Europeans with warrior genotype here. Uh, they may be less than, like, Asians or Africans, but there are Europeans with warrior genotype. Now, here, his genotype is pretty much directly contradicting his warrior status in Compt. He has reduced MAOA activity. MAOA is an enzyme that breaks down dopamine. Just like Compt, so having reduced MAOA activity means less dopamine gets broken down. You have more dopamine in your system. This is like the warrior gene in Compt. Uh, so it's the opposite of what he's got there. And in MTHFR, he does not have the variation that has to do with impaired folate metabolism. Good for him. Uh, he's got this variation that protects him from cleft lip and various other uh, illnesses. Now, cleft lip is a very ugly thing to have. Uh, you can look it up on Google. And um, does not have derived EDAR, no East Asian EDAR, no East Asian facial traits such as shovel-shaped incisors, epicanthic folds, all that stuff. Uh, and um, he does have the European lactose persistence mutation. So he is capable of digesting milk. He does have the European one. There's other ones. Uh, aside from the European one, but he's got the European one. And uh, this variation basically predisposes him to having high myopia, which is like nearsightedness where you need glasses to see in the distance. Uh, for example, I have myopia and uh, I need glasses to see in the distance when it's like, when it's beyond like an arm's reach, I basically need glasses to see it. And um, in OXTR, he has this genotype. So this is the only variation in OXTR that he was genotyped for. So this is the one I'm going to go with. Uh, and based on his genotype here, uh, may have had the sociopathic phenotype, uh, may have been a little bit of a sociopath. Now, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Uh, a lot of North Atlantic and Baltic, but also way too much West Asian, like 11% West Asian is not typical for any modern Ukrainian or Russian to score. Um, I score a lot of West Asian, but I score only like 7%. This guy is scoring 11%, uh, so it's pretty crazy, pretty crazy high number. 
uh, with the Oracle he is closest to Ukrainian Bel Belgorod and Russians from Smolensk. Um, and he's actually getting more as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Chechen or Lithuanian plus various uh, North Caucasians. This is because uh, because of the extremely high West Asian that he's scoring. Uh, this is what he's scoring with MDLPK11. It seems that here not, not as much Caucasus shift uh, as you would expect. He's only scoring 25.5% EHG, which is like the Caucasus hunter-gatherer component here. It's not EHG, it's really CHG. It's just misnamed that way. Um, Closest to unities, followed by corded wear from Poland, uh, basically closest to various Indo-Europeans of the Bronze Age Europe. Now this is what he scores with Harappa World, kind of high Baloch here, but Baloch could be, uh, it could be from some kind of recent admixture from Iran, or it could also be just uh, ancient remainder from Caucasus hunter-gatherers and Yamnaya. So it's kind of hard to, to judge here, he's closest to Ukrainians, followed by Belarusians, and uh, with the Oracle, he's actually getting more as a mixture of Belarusian plus Brahvi or Makranif or Baloch. So maybe this Baloch admixture is more recent, I don't know. Uh, this is what he scores with um, G25. Also, you can see there's he's getting more as a mixture of Russian, Estonian, with various other groups, plus Darginian or Tabasaran. So there is a little bit of Caucasus admixture in this individual as well, at least relative to like Estonians and Baltic people, maybe not to Russians, but uh, it's... The it seems that G25 really prefers to model him as a mixture of specifically Baltic plus West Asian rather than just simply Russian or Ukrainian, even though Russian and Ukrainian is kind of in the middle between Baltic and West Asian because he's got a lot of specific drift that's specific to Balts and West Asians. And you see this here with Pond DNA LK10 as well. He's scoring 52% VHG. That's a lot of Baltic specific drift, even though VHG here is not um, a Western Hunter Gatherer component, it's really just Euro Northern, Northern European specific drift. So he's got a lot of Northern European specific drift. And because of this Northern European specific drift, he's getting more of a mixture of Lithuanian plus various West Asians rather than like Russian plus Ukrainian, right? This is what he scores with Ponzianel K12. Kind of not a lot of Caucasus. I mean, this is about as much as I score, so he's. Uh, not even all that Caucasian, however, uh, however, this is still more than what's typical for like Eastern Europeans, Belarusians, Ukrainians, and with the Oracle, he's still getting more or less a mixture of Belarusian plus Nagai, or Belarusian plus Turkmen, or Belarusian plus like Balkar or Chechen, so he, relative to the Belarusians, he's still shifted towards the Caucasus and Western Asia. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, interesting that he's scoring 3% Ancestral South Eurasian here. Um, and you have to remember this 3% Ancestral South Eurasian because it's going to be very relevant to the Oracle that's coming up. With the Oracle, he's closest to Estonian, followed by Europe uh, LNBA, followed by Finnish, followed by Lithuanian, so basically very Northeast European. However, he's actually getting more as a mixture of, you can see, Estonian plus Paliar, line number 14, or line number 16, Estonian plus Panias. That's because he's got this uh, seemingly Ancestral South Eurasian or Ancestral South Indian admixture to him. And uh, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, uh, overwhelmingly West Eurasian, however he does have East Eurasian admixture and a little bit of Sub-Saharan African shift too. I think the Sub-Saharan African that he scores can be attributed to uh, the affinities that existed between European farmers and Sub-Saharan Africans, whereas the East Eurasian that he's scoring can be attributed to the affinities that existed between European hunter-gatherers and the East Eurasians, and also from actual genuine you know, East Eurasian admixture that he might have got from like Uralic people, right? Which were already in Europe at this time. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Goodbye.